The European Union. It's on the news. It drives people for and against. Countries wanting to join and others to leave. But what exactly is the EU and why does it exist? Let us find out. The short answer is war. War brings death, wounded, destruction and economic recession. The end of major conflicts also allow the institution of new rules and treaties that regulate the relations between states, such as the Peace of Westphalia in 1648 after the Thirty Years' War, the Vienna Settlement in 1815 after the Napoleon's rule over Europe, the Treaty of Versailles in 1919 after the First World War, and the current international liberal order post-World War II with the institution of several international organizations like the United Nations, the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. From 1914 to 1945, Europe was the stage for two bloody world wars. The consequences determined that the old continent was no longer a world power. The United States of America, together with the Soviets, were the sole competitors with those capabilities. In this critical situation, the European leaders saw the unity of the continent as the only way to both ensure peace and that Europe could still be a valid stakeholder in the new international system. The main priority? Reconciliation between France and Germany. The mutual sharing of the main natural resources under a supranational organization called the European Coal and Steel Community in 1951 was the key to initiate a binding friendship. The six ECSC members were Germany, France, Belgium, the Netherlands, Luxembourg and Italy. According to the French politician Robert Schumann, the integration process should be gradual and continuous, meaning that the institution of the ECSC was only but the first step towards an European federation based on peace, solidarity and social economic prosperity. But having a supranational entity that would determine policies at a national level is something usually perceived as an interference in the internal affairs of a state. Fearing to lose parts of their sovereignty was precisely what caused the United Kingdom to stay out of the ECSC at the first place. On the other hand, it allowed the other six to remain more closely knit. With the UK out of the table, they tried to define a European political cooperation treaty that foreseen the necessity of adding a common European army to the already existing economic cooperation but that failed to be ratified by France in 1954, sending the integration process back to the sectorial status. In 1955, the six started a new round of negotiations focusing on the economic sector in order to define an European common market. A customs union with the objective to remove trade barriers between member states while also defining a common external tariff. Implicit to this is the fact that the member states lose their capacity to define trade deals individually. Those deals would have to be formed multilaterally. The result of those negotiations led to the Treaty of Rome, founding the European Economic Community in 1957, a project aiming for a political union. Parallel to this, the UK formed in 1960 an alternative integration process, the European Free Trade Association, composed by the Outer Seven. Austria, Denmark, Norway, Portugal, Sweden, Switzerland and the UK. A free trade area differs from a customs union by allowing member states to keep an independent economic policy towards outside nations. As an alternative project, the EFTA was meant to show the EEC that you don't need political integration in order to guarantee peace and prosperity. Despite that, the EFTA wasn't capable of competing with the EEC and, after two requests in 1963 and 67, rejected by France, the UK joined the EEC along with Denmark and Ireland. Progressively, the remaining outer seven would knock on the EEC's door. On the next episode, the expansion of the EU.